What's up, family? So this was an embarrassing game. Get this video a big thumbs up. It helps crush that YouTube algorithm. It's totally free. So this this was an embarrassing, an embarrassingly absolute embarrassing game. I have never seen a game refereed like this. I'm seeing players get mewed on the fevers and going for layups, and then multiple, multiple phantom um, fouls called on the fever. Like it was like a I'm just gonna get rid of you type of attitude um, towards the fever. And then you can see um, Caitlin Clark I here. Um, she got poked in the eye. And it's like, man, this is a dictatorship. Like, let's not forget that. This is an absolutely embarrassing referee game. Um, like, if you want to see the play right here, family, that I want to present to you with Caitlin Clark going for the rebound and then, you know, getting the ball. And then... Father, no. There we go. Out to Clark. So she drives right. Clark trying to get around Mabry. Clark to the rim. Reverses it home. And she was pushed midair. And then I have another video, a clip of a closer angle to a family so you guys can check this out to see the foul because first of all it was a foul when she pushed off of her from driving right i'm not sure if you guys seen that certainly what she does here at see so i want to show you guys first before i show you the push midair from another angle when she was up top above um before she even drove past um being you know past the wing she was obviously being pushed here See, she pushed her, uh, the defender in front. But this is another angle of her being pushed midair when she went for the layup. Attacking Marina Mabry, moving her feet as best she can. That is a tough finish inside. Well, and that's what we saw, Rebecca. Clearly I mean, pushed. Re uh, Clark was that was a clear foul, but it wasn't called. Um, however, family, uh, you can see also Christy size. She got a technical foul two minutes and 25 seconds into the game by obviously saying profanity towards the refs, expressing her frustration. And then you can see Erica Wheeler, you know, immediately being on de-escalation de duty as Erica Wheeler. I feel like she just brings good chemistry to the team to keep the team gelled together. As we all know, the Indiana Fever has great team chemistry when it comes to bonding together. But check this out. Getting getting tech. Christy size getting attacked. Before catching that back. So that was in the first quarter, family. Christy Size got a tech. Um, man, oh man. So, um, and it's probably the right call in fairness. I don't mind, I don't mind at all um, with Christy, Christy Size getting a tech. Um, and then the play that I presented to you guys with Kaylin Clark going for that right, for that layup, driving to the right, it's like how many fouls? Like, if you watch this play, how many fouls do you think were called in this play? Literally. You know, so she got pushed. Um, she got first she got pushed and then she got pushed mid-air layup. So Kaylin Clark just dribbling the ball on the floor. Opposite, it was obviously a foul. There's, there's no doubt about that. Um and there were a, a quite few fouls in that play right there. She jumped into her back. And not only that, but then DeAndre DeAndre Carrington um, here with the poke, the eye poke of hell, um, I call it, um, which was a disaster in the first place. So, and I'll replay it again. So this was Kaylin Clark with the ball, passing it. Poked her right in her eye. So that was DeAndre Carrington with the eye poke of hell. And I feel like that was intentional. I'm sorry. Um, that is not a normal human motion. Um, Caden Clark has not even made a jump shot since that happened. And, um, man, it just, you can see her eye, Caden Clark's eye here. I want to show you guys. Um, you can see. It's clearly swollen. Um, her eyes are swollen, most definitely, no doubt about it. And um, before that, the first defensive possession in the game, Alyssa Thomas may or may not have been fouled by Alexi Hall. Um, Aaliyah Boston, 10, 10 feet away from the play. She's literally 10 feet away in um, the play, and then it was just a foul on, um, a foul on Ali Aaliyah. Uh, Katie Lou, Katie Lou Samuelson, 
had also had fouls, um, a phantom call of fouls, uh, for three points there at the end of the quarter because I was watching towards halftime. So these were my notes based on the halftime when I was watching the game. So, like, players were nowhere near them, and Katie Lou Samuelson was nowhere near um, Dewana Bonner, and she got caught a foul. So it was like going into the quarter, down five, um, they were going down like eight when I was at the halftime break. And looking at Kelsey Mitchell getting tripped up as she falls out of bounds, no call, no call on Kelsey Mitchell. We're seeing phantom calls on players on a fever. Kelsey Mitchell um, tripped up, nothing. Kaitlyn Clark pushed to the ground in the layup, no call. So we're seeing again, and we just saw, we all know DeAndre Carrington's nails are just like her, her eye gouge towards Caitlin Clark for nothing was way out of line. I feel like they need a short nail policy because those acrylics, when females get their nails done, it's dangerous. Um, <laughs> it's just crazy. But at the same time, you got to give credit to where credit's due to Alyssa Thomas. She is shooting. Um, I am shocked she is shooting. But then in the second quarter, um, three fast breaks from the Indiana Fever. Um, three fast breaks were stopped. Why were they stopped? Um, because of scoring malfunctions. The Fever had three fast breaks stopped, stopped from scoring malfunctions. Um, score table malfunctions have stopped three Fever fast breaks. So how many fast breaks has been stopped from the Connecticut Sun? Zero. So anytime the ball goes to the Connecticut Sun, Alyssa Thomas and her defense um, balling with these long outlet passes, um, she is hooping on a fast break. But every single time they miss a shot, we miss a shot, they go on a fast break. And they scored a bunch on a fast break. And um, fair play to Alyssa Thomas. Uh, but every single time we have a chance as a fast break, it's like a stop, stop, stop. And it's embarrassing. And this is an embarrassing game of basketball. The problem is, again, the ball is hardly, the ball um, hardly been in play. And the ball doesn't, it's like, does not feel like the ball has been in play. And when Connecticut had the ball, the shot clock is fine. Uh, when Connecticut had the ball, there's nothing wrong with the shot clock here. You know what I'm saying? So the funnier part about this is Caitlin Clark, who can't hit a shot because clearly she can't see. Like, so she's not even trying to do anything. Um, so, but she did have three assists in the first quarter. Um, she was barely playing basketball ever since the eye poke from hell. And then... Um, Man, then Caitlin, Caitlin Clark, who is a point guard, is standing in the corner, and then she wasn't trying to pass. She she wasn't even trying to shoot, and I feel like she should have gave her eye some time to dilate. Um, I don't know, man. It it, it it was just crazy. So it was like, and then Katie Lou Samuelson may be the worst player in the WNBA. How Katie Lou Samuelson minus eight on the floor. And they are they were down eight points, and then Katie Lou Samuelson in three minutes was minus eight, and then they went on what was an eight to eight to zero run, uh, ten to two run. Then the three minutes Katie Lou Samuelson played, um, Lexi Hall might have been have mo the most important player on the team. Genuinely, she might have been the most important player for people saying if Caitlin Clark can't shoot, take her to the hoop. Man, I don't, I don't think she can see. So. I don't think her taking it to the hoop would even make a difference because I don't think she can see properly. And um, and if anyone thinks you can play a game of basketball with a swollen eye and it not affect you, then, like, obviously you have never done <laughs> anything in regards to playing basketball in life. But, like, uh, I'm blaming Katie Lou. No Katie. Katie Lou just sucks at basketball. I'm not blaming Katie Lou. It's not her fault she plays basketball, but she just not she did not give herself uh how can I put this? She is not putting herself in the game. You know. She did not give herself the contract. But this was just embarrassingly a bad performance by the refs and embarrassingly bad performance because every single time anything seems to happen, the fever have three to four phantom call, phantom fouls called on them. And the Fever have three to four turnovers from getting hacked. And from getting hacked, the ball just the ball just going out of bounds. So 
we're looking at a game where Dewana Bonner guarding Caitlin Clark is going to make a difference. But Caitlin Clark has been guarded for half of this game by one of the worst defensive players in the WNBA, Marina Marbury. And um, Caitlin Clark won't even attempt to go at Marina Marbury. Um, like, there's obviously something wrong with her, and there's something very, very wrong with her. And um, and she had a slow first half. You know, Caitlin Clark had plenty of slow halves. Uh, like, she had zero points at halftime against the Aces and ended up with the 18 points. And the difference is that she can't shoot open. Um, Dewana Bonner height is not stopping Caitlin Clark missing. And Dewana Bonner has contested maybe one of Caitlin Clark's jump shots. Um, but she's not the reason why Caitlin Clark um, wide open catch and shoot brick. So, look, man, it's just crazy. But that is pretty much. Uh, she should have been taken off to get medical treatment while she was on the court. And, man... They can't win without Caitlin Clark. They can't win without her. They can't win with. They can't. They can't win. They can't win without her, bro. So, but in all fairness, Tawana, uh, Dewana Bonner has done a good job on defense. She has length, and um, I don't know what 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 medical treatment you could get to fix a poke in the eye from the Johnny Carrington's nails, but um. Yeah, man. So I'm going to leave it right there, family. Comment down below what you guys think. Give this video a big thumbs up. Spread that peace, love, and positivity. And on that note, family, peace.